like any society, Uganda is very patriarchal. The party I lead since 2010 was also founded by six men. When I took over, the first initiative was to establish a task force on women's participation in the political party. The task force came up with some good recommendations. For instance, giving women a voice in decision making concerning how funds are spent, giving women virtually a veto in determining women's programs, and then ensuring that women are represented to the extent of 40% in the delegates' conferences. All these recommendations have been accepted by the National Executive Committee of the party. But as far as I'm concerned, my role as chief executive of the party has been pivotal. I have the political will. Because of my own personal experience, I was brought up by very strong women. My aunt, under whose tutelage I first went to school. My grandmother, who brought me up from the age of eight months after my mother left. And then my other mother, you can call her my stepmother. So in many ways, and in addition to the schools I attended where I met many strong and able women, it is not a problem for me to accept that men and women may be different, but they are equal. We have now decided that any woman who is contesting in an election will be entitled to a minimum of 3,000 US dollars. That started almost like a, a unilateral decision by myself then I had to sell it across the party structures. About a month ago, we just beat the ruling party in a hotly contested election where we supported one woman. This is a woman who has got very good stories. So the women who deserve to rise in politics are the women who have excelled elsewhere. This woman was a young nurse during the time when the AIDS, HIV AIDS epidemic was ravaging Uganda. Her story is a beautiful story. When we approached her and told her, your story is compelling. You need a bigger platform. Why don't you go to parliament? At first she was shy. Then she told us, I don't have money. She told us, I need support. She told us, what about the violence from the ruling party? We told her we would do everything possible to make you win. She was able to win. Her story is now an inspiration to others. I also do a lot of one-to-one -one mentorship of uh, women leaders. We have got a scholarship program through which we enable women to go back to school. A lot of the young women have academic qualifications, but the older women don't have academic qualifications. In Uganda, you need to have A-levels in order to be able to contest for parliament or, or any other higher seat. So these are initiatives that we have done in the Democratic Party to open up opportunities and to make sure that we reduce the obstacles that are in the path of women. Many obstacles remain. I can't say we have achieved all that we intend to achieve, but at least we have got the determination to stay the course so that women are equal partners in our party. There has been no resistance that I cannot deal with. Sometimes you have other men saying, you know, our president is encircled by women, they are influencing him too much. Some of them even start rumors of uh, possible affairs between you and the women. But eventually it is about my character. It is my character which exonerates my reputation from such, uh, such rumors. And in any case, the women who we have deliberately promoted have made the party very, very proud, to the extent that some of the women we have uh, given opportunities have been able to go into the so-called male constituencies and beat the men hands down. So these kind of stories are creating a critical mass within the decision-making organs of our party in support of our agenda of increasing women's participation.